Coming next on Adventurer, part two of our chat with Olympic backstroke champ Aaron Pearsall. Don't go away. Clash, James Clash. This is Adventurer, the show with guests who truly push their lives to the limits. No talking heads here, just the real deals. I'm Jim Clash. Last time we discussed Aaron Pearsall's contribution to Michael Phelps' eighth gold medal in Beijing. Today, Pearsall tells us about the Bank of America Hopefuls program, his November swim for the oceans, and whether he'll go for a fourth Olympics in 2012. Now you and your own right are an amazing backstroker. I know you've got five gold medals in the Olympics and two silvers. You've done three different Olympics, Sydney in 2000, 2004 in uh, Greece, and now uh, in Beijing. Um, is there any way we'll see uh, Aaron Pearsall in the Olympics in London in 2012? Yeah, I think so. I, I'm going to take it year by year. You know, I think a after something like this, you kind of just want to unwind. But, um, or like, you know, at least what we just did, it's certainly time to kind of reflect and kind of see where you want to go from there. Um, but I'm still young. You know, I think as far as what the, the veterans, the true veterans in our sport, the guys, who are, the guys and girls who are over 30 now are showing is that you can stick around for a lot longer. Yeah, Typically. they're a tourist. Look at her. Right. She's 41. Exactly. And she even took some, some years off in there, you know, uh -huh. and, uh, and she keeps coming back. And so the, it shows what, what is possible. Certainly swimming, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, you had to stop when you are about 23 just because so you, you had to move on. You had to go make a living and do that kind of thing. Right. And your body was getting tired. But the, the ways in training have changed, and you're able to stay around for a little longer, and it's, it's better for the sport. Now I know also you're part of the, the Bank of America Hopefuls program and, uh, and you're doing something uh, later this year to save the oceans. Tell us about those two projects. Right, I'm involved with uh, the Hometown Hopefuls program with the Bank of America and, um, and they, they really kind of uh, you know, helped out with the Olympics quite a bit as far as you know, uh, getting everyone to know a few of the athletes uh, involved in the Olympics. And, and uh, what I'm involved with is an, is an organization solely dedicated to the world's oceans, um, just over, over pollu or overfishing and pollution. And uh, it's a race for the oceans down in Fort Myers on November 8th. Okay. And, uh, <clears throat> and Bank of America has donated uh, a large sum of money, you know, thankfully. And it uh, was a, a great donation, a great help for, for what, of course, we're trying to do. And, and that money's going, going towards Oceana to try to, to help educate and to try to save the world's oceans in regard to, you know, all the bad stuff that's going on. Um, but certainly it's something, you know, I, I grew up around. I guess I, I kind of have a personal interest in you it. You grew up where? I grew up in uh, Southern California, down uh, Orange County. Okay, and you, so you're right on the ocean. You Yeah, and, and, I, and it's something I, I'd always been passionate about. And, uh, you know, when I do go home, I live in Austin now, but when I do go home and, and uh, <clears throat> I realize, you know, more and more closed beaches every time I go home. And I, I'm still, it's, you know, that's where I learn how to swim. It's what I'm very, uh, it's kind of where I came from, more or less. And so I, I do have some kind of, deep passion for it. I, I don't want to give back as much as I can. Um, I want to end on a topic that's a little bit, uh, I don't know, uh, steroid use. Now, you guys in the swimming community have very little of that, or at least there's been very little that's been publicized about it. Right. Um, well, <laughs> tell me about the, the, the reason why the swimming community seems to have less of it than track and field, uh, uh, bicycling. I, I can't speak for track and field or bicycling. I, I know um, you know, swimming's been very fortunate to, to be where it is. You know, I think that uh, uh, the purity of the sport is still there, you know, but certainly it's something we always try to stress, you know, because we, um, you know, in the past eight years, there has been a lot more money involved in this, you know, being pushed into the mm -hmm. sport. And we're not, we're not exactly sure where that'll take it. We, you know, we, we are completely thankful and, and, and very hopeful for where the, the sport is going. Um, but yeah, I mean, if so, of course, you know, you, you want, you always, everyone wants a clean sport, you know, no one, everyone races to, or swims to, to race against the best in the world and, and on a fair ground, you know, and uh, and we were, you know, I can speak for the guys on our U.S. team. We all respect, you know, each other so much. I don't know if we would do something like that. Yeah. So, you know, we, we certainly, you know, we this is something we, we always want to keep at the forefront of the top of the conversation as far as com you know, competition goes. We hope to see you in London. Uh, it's been a real honor to have you here. And thank you. good luck with your uh, swim for the oceans and also in the next Olympics. I appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you very sir. much. Okay. To read more about adventure, pick up Forbes magazine or click on Forbes.com slash to the limits. And thanks for watching the Forbes.com video network. Clash, James Clash.